Now to the climate change stack. I've, I've been alluding to this, and here's the value of this. You know, when you boil it down, folks, what is climate change? Climate change is a political issue. It is not scientific fact. It is not settled science. It it requires them to say they have a consensus of scientists who agree that X equals Y equals Z. But in science, there is no consensus because scientific reality is not up for a vote. Water is H2O. It's not something else. The earth is round. It's not flat. And somebody thinks it's flat. You put it up for a vote. It doesn't mean that the earth is round because there's a consensus of scientists who say so. It's round because it is. And it has been established and proven scientifically. Well, climate change can't be proven scientifically because the predictions of it don't say it will not happen for the next 30 to 40 years. It's all computer models. There is no empirical data. There is none. These people don't realize it, but they tell us climate change is going to happen the next 30 to 50 years, even maybe the end of this century. That's why we got to get busy now trying to reduce carbon footprint because it's going to be bad. And then we'll have a heat wave and they'll say, see, see, climate change. Wait a minute. You said it's not going to happen for 20 or 30 years. What do you mean, see, see? It's nothing but politics. But here is the clincher. What is the blame? What is the cause? The scientific consensus that tries to make you and particularly your children believe that there is climate change. What is the cause? It is the advanced lifestyle of the United States of America that is directly to blame for climate change. Oh, yes, it is. It's our SUVs. It's our industrialization. It is the use of fossil fuels. It is progress. Climate change is the fault of advanced civilizations. In their telling, they have to guilt somebody. They have to make somebody feel responsible so that they can make those people change their behavior and change the way they vote and change their position on issues. And the climate change crowd wants everybody voting liberal Democrat for expanding, never-ending expanding government, massive tax increases, and restrictions and regulations on private sector businesses. Because all of those things are responsible for the destruction of the planet. You'll note it's not the Chicoms doing it. It's not some poor little communist country with pollution out the wazoo. It's us. And they have succeeded in persuading a bunch of skulls full of mush that by the time they are 65, the earth may not be able to support human life, that it will be too hot, and that people's blood will boil. So it's in this scenario that I examine every climate change story. They are routinely found on tech media. The people in tech media think they're all scientists. They love science fiction. They love science. They think everything about themselves is scientific. So first up is a uh, a story here. My old buddy Mark Morano, our old man in Washington of the TV show, now runs a website called Climate Depot. And he publishes the result of a new study that says concern over climate change has been linked to depression, anxiety, restless nights, feelings of loneliness, and lethargy. The hardest hit are women and people with low incomes who worry about the planet's long-term health, uh, said the study published in the Journal of Global Environmental Change. Symptoms of... This particular psychological condition include restless nights, feelings of loneliness, and lethargy. Sabrina Helm, the lead author of the paper, professor, family, consumer scientist, University of Arizona. Climate change is a persistent global stressor. A U.S. Navy ship is trapped in Montreal until spring due to 
icy waters. A newly commissioned Navy warship will be wintering in Montreal after its journey to Florida was interrupted by cold and ice. A Navy spokeswoman said the USS Little Rock was commissioned in Buffalo December 16th, expected to make its way to its home port in Mayport, Florida, but instead it's caught in ice since Christmas Eve in Montreal, and it will not thaw sufficiently for this ship to move until May. Uh, Mid-March. I'm sorry, mid-March. So which is it? The planet is heating up to the point our blood's going to boil, or how does that coincide with a Navy ship trapped in Montreal until spring due to icy waters? Next story, Scientific American. Cleaning up air pollution may strengthen global warming. Now, wait a minute. At first, they told us pollution was causing global warming. CO2. Ozone. Pollution caused by evil American corporations that don't care whether they kill people, pollute the rivers, pollute the air. They don't care. Now, cleaning up air pollution may strengthen global warming. How? Pollution in the atmosphere is having an unexpected consequence. Scientists say it's helping to cool the climate, masking some of the global warming that has occurred so far. Oh, so see what's happening. It really isn't warming up, folks. There hadn't been any significant warming in now 17 years. So they have to keep coming up with reasons why their models are wrong. And it turns out now that we are putting too much pollution up there, and it's... It's, it's, it's cooling the planet like volcanic ash does. Prevents the destructive heat from reaching us. And so if we clean up the pollution, if we get rid of the pollution, we can kill ourselves. That's what this story is. The next story is from a tech blog. If we start deliberately cooling the earth, we may not be able to stop. This is a sad story. It's, it's, it's hilarious. It's written by a young tech blogger who obviously buys into every lie and distortion. Just read the first paragraph. Blasting aerosols into the sky to reverse climate change seems like an exciting proposition, but it may be too dangerous to attempt. If we try and then we suddenly halt global warming from this kind of geoengineering, it could cause more damage than climate change itself, according... So anything we do to fix climate change could make it worse. By blasting aerosols into the sky. Global warming is a pressing problem, it says, and some scientists believe that sending a plane to spray sulfate aerosols into the sky will help cool down the Earth. In a study published today in the journal Nature, Ecology, and Evolution, One of my favorite magazines. Researchers used models, here we go again with models, to predict what would happen if we sprayed the aerosols for 50 years. You know what would happen? We would cause massive global cooling that we couldn't stop. So yet another brilliant effort, a brilliant plan to stop the warming, spraying aerosols into the atmosphere for 50 years could end up killing us all by freezing us to death. I'm not reading parodies. I'm not reading satire. I'm reading actual news stories written by people who believe all of this. CNN claim that an unmonitored asteroid could slam into Earth during government shutdown is debunked. Did you know that CNN was reporting this? CNN was reporting last week that an unmonitored asteroid could slam into Earth during the government shutdown. But that claim of CNN's was debunked by other scientists. An unmonitored asteroid was going to cram us, ram it, during the government show. Why? Because it was mad. The asteroid was livid that we were closing the borders to illegal immigrants.